Welcome back. According to the Federal Reserve, cash is still king in the United States. But what if it didn't have to be that way? Earlier, I spoke to Duke University finance professor Campbell Harvey about why he thinks the U.S. should scrap its cold hard paper currency and migrate the entire system to blockchain. There are many countries that are interested in this technology because they see that it solves a number of problems. Uh, indeed, uh, one of the low-hanging fruits is to redo um, currency in general. So why is it just Bitcoin? Why can't the US dollar uh, be a cryptocurrency? So it, it solves so many issues. So there's no counterfeiting. Um, there's no evasion of taxes by paying paper cash. So, so most central banks are investigating this technology uh, to essentially um, realize that in the future, it doesn't make any sense that we're using paper for currency. It doesn't make any sense that we have a paper passport in the future. It doesn't make any sense we have a driver's license as we know it. It's not hard to forecast this, and the way to make it happen is with blockchain technology. So within many different uh, countries, many different departments within governments are independently pursuing this technology. It solves so many problems. But that is an incredible suggestion. I mean, you're so confident in the accuracy and verifiability of cryptocurrencies and the blockchain technology that you think the U.S. economy should or could be based on an American cryptocurrency? So to me, it's inevitable um, because it doesn't make any sense in the future that we're going to be trading pieces of paper. Uh, people will look back uh, th at this as just a historical episode. We went from kind of coinage and gold and silver to paper for a while, and then it'll go electronic. We're seeing this in other areas, uh, whether it's broadcasting, which is now entirely digital, uh, books, newspapers. It's obvious we're going in this direction, and this is a way to do it. You can't just have a digital dollar. That's a bad idea because you can make an exact replica of it, just like you make a replica of a song or a video or a book. So you need this technology that takes the serial number on the currency seriously, and it prevents people from counterfeiting, and it's got a record of everything you can't spend more than you actually have. So blockchain is the solution to the digital currency, and people have been talking about digital currency for 30 years, and every single initiative has failed until people realize that blockchain can solve the problems. And that's an important distinction there. You're not advocating for a digital dollar per se, but you do think the US government could and should base a currency on blockchain technology? Uh, well, I believe that um, we will have digital currencies in the future. Indeed, some countries uh, like Sweden, less than 2% of their transactions are done in cash. So we're already moving towards a digital uh, sort of uh, currency. Blockchain makes that happen, and there's just no reason that you can't have uh, a Fed coin or a can coin, or different countries having their own um, crypto blockchain based currency. I see that as inevitable. So if what you're saying is true, and it is kind of an exciting future to envision and imagine, how soon might this be a reality? So different countries are going to move at different speeds, and it's not going to be next year. But for countries like Sweden, that less than 2% of the transactions are in cash, it's actually no big deal to lose the cash. So um, I think some of the um, smaller and medium-sized countries will go first uh, with this. And I think that uh, eventually um, everybody uh, will be crypto national currency based. And indeed, I believe the biggest threat to currencies like Bitcoin are central bank backed uh, cryptocurrencies like Fedcoin. What kind of reaction do you get from most people, the layman, when you make such a prediction? Well, people say, well, it's not gonna happen. We really like our cash. Um, and, and I get that. Um, and 
there is a resistance, a conservatism. Uh, we like kind of what we have, but it is, as I said, inevitable. The cash can be reproduced and counterfeited. The cash wears out, has to be redone. Um, given the world that we're headed towards digitally, it just doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense that we're gonna be using paper. So I really believe that uh, the children born today, they're never going to have paper currency. They're never gonna have a traditional bank account. Their bank is gonna be in their equivalent uh, to the future smartphone. That's it. But in order to have access to this world you envision, you need a computer, you need a smartphone. So might the move toward this type of technology accelerate the digital divide that exists between the developed and the developing world? Uh, so this is uh, an interesting point that you raise. I believe the adoption of these technologies uh, will not be driven by the developed world. Really? Look, there are two billion people in the world that are unbanked. They have no access to a bank, or there's a bank 200 miles away. They don't have a credit card. They don't have a debit card. They are unbanked. And now, with the uh, steep drop in the price of uh, a smartphone, so you can get a smartphone in Africa for $25. Okay, and, and you usually get it with, um, with a very small solar a panel. So you, even if you don't have electricity, you've got enough power to charge that smartphone. That brings people into the digital world. It allows them to access the internet via their smartphone. And the cryptocurrency allows them to transact, to buy stuff and to sell stuff. They can't do that right now. So the, the actual need is the greatest in the developing world. For us in the United States and other developed countries, well, we've got credit cards, we've got currency. What about the two billion people that have nothing, that are shut out of all of these opportunities? This is a great social innovation also. If this future you imagine does come to fruition, how much should the US government be investing in this blockchain technology infrastructure, just from a national security perspective? So certainly in terms of currency, right now uh, the US dollar is the, is the reserve currency of the world. And if the US considers that uh, advantageous in the future, then it needs to be uh, aggressive in pursuing this technology so that the equivalent crypto version of the US dollar, and let's call it FedCoin, is the reserve currency of the world in the future. So the US as a country doesn't want to be left behind uh, either. So yes, I believe that uh, the US should be aggressive on this, even though the need for a cryptocurrency within the US might be uh, overall or on average smaller than the need to have a cryptocurrency in, for example, a country in Africa. Well, your classroom is now much larger than what you have there at uh, Duke University. I'm sure everyone listening now will be taking note of the points you're making. Campbell Harvey, thank you so much for your time today. Great to be on the show.